All right, guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week, we're going to be making a start on the Tiger Rewire. I've been working on it when I've had a few spare minutes here and there. First few clips were recorded all the way back in July, so it's taken me a little while to do. Anyway, we've got some coloured wires. For short bits like this, I found music shops can be a good source, particularly those that handle electric guitars. A little while ago, we fitted the mount for the connector to the lower hull. Link in the description if you're interested. We're using a good old D15, which just so happens to have the perfect number of pins for our little setup. The first step was to rewire the turret. I've not changed the layout of the connections, just replaced the very thin, short wires with some new ones. It's important there's enough slack so when the turret rotates it doesn't stress any of the wiring. Using a little bit of heat shrink every couple of inches keeps it all nice and tidy, but still allows for plenty of flexibility. I did seriously consider using a slip ring. This one would fit okay. The problem though is the wipers are only specced for about 50 or so milliamps, which is fine for signals, but we're running motors that are going to be wanting 10 times that. It would work, but the life would be severely shortened. Without the airsoft gun, you could probably get away with it quite nicely, even using a smaller slip ring and doubling up the connections for the elevation motor. The turret elevation goes to a continuous rotation servo board. We did a video on those a little while ago, link in the description. Next, we have the rotation motor along with its servo board. That leaves us with four wires for the airsoft gun and two servo leads for the turret. For the next bit, we'll be changing the servo lead on the light controller and rewiring the machine gun LED. It's easy enough to do. Remove the heat shrink and you're left with a standard 5mm LED. Here we are then. The two parts of the loom are now done and joined up with the loose ends running down the side of the hull. Just like the turret wires, we need to be careful not to add any major stress points for the wiring to fail. As far as possible, it's all nice and curvy. One more thing to do, fit the D15 on the end. And there we go, the upper hull wiring now ends in a single connector. It's going to make it a lot easier to get inside the hull and fiddle. We've still got to wire up the lower hull of course, and move the speaker and possibly the receiver. I've got some ideas for them, but that's going to have to wait for next time. Sorry today's video was so short, I hope it will provide some inspiration if nothing else. As always, thanks for watching, like if you liked, and if you're not already, by all means subscribe. It's free after all. Bye guys.